Welcome to Resident Evil Secrets Revealed. We are doing village and we're going through every crate, item, and treasure in the map. Some of them are very hidden and I'm sure there's one or two you didn't know existed. Here we go. S starting out in the game we are going to come into the house where we obtain the knife for the first time. If you do not get this knife and this medkit here, it is missable. You cannot return to this house. Next we're going to be, this is going to be where we're doing the lichen defense fight. Over here in this room here we have a chem fluid and a herb. And we're going to make our way around and through the red doors. Come all the way around here. We're going to have a box right here that is random, meaning that it can drop anything from handgun ammo or money, nothing else. Coming inside this house, we're going to have a green herb on the floor to our right. We're going to have a set of handgun ammo in here and a gunpowder right here, as well as the M1897 shotgun on the table. In the adjacent room, we're going to have gunpowder on this barrel and a stack of handgun ammo on this table. Once you drop down where the ladder is, you're going to find some rusted scrap directly in front of you. And another rusted scrap right around the corner here before the exit of the house. Making our way out of this house, we're going to make a quick turn around the side of the house and we're going to find a random barrel here. It can be handgun ammo or money only. As we approach the next house up here to the north, we're going to have a random box right here that can also be handgun ammo or money only. Once we enter the house, you have to enter from the north side. We will have shotgun shells on this dresser. Behind us we will have a breakable box that can only be, you guessed it, handgun, ammo, or money. And on the table across here, we're going to have a green herb. Once finished, we're going to advance all the way to Louisa's house. So my pathing is going to be a little weird. We're going to come back to get some things later, so bear with me. Entering Louisa's house, we're going to have a green herb here. There's going to be money under the sink and some shotgun shells behind us. You can only enter this house one time, so if you have advanced your game beyond this point, you will not be able to return to pick these items. As we exit Louisa's house and re see, retrieve our demon crest, we're going to come here to the west side and we're, or I'm sorry, the east side. And get a chem fluid out of our first outhouse. Heading back towards the village from Louisa's house. We're going to run through this house directly in front of Louisa's house. We'll find a random box here. That can be anything. Literally anything except for crafting parts. A gunpowder on that table there. Once we exit, we will have a bird cage in the tree in the middle of the fallow plot. This will always have 1,000 money. It will never be anything else. Then we will have a crate right here that will always have gunpowder in it. These are fixed boxes, which means their contents don't change on any difficulty. This box here is completely random. It can be handgun ammo, shotgun ammo, or money, but not a crafting item. All the way around the corner here, we're going to have a rusted scrap in this little divot kind of in between things. It's easy to miss. As we make our way kind of back towards the church, we're going to find a gunpowder right here on this little roof. Making our way in front of the tractor, we are going to have some rusted scrap right here. and some shotgun shells on this table. 
there is also a rusted scrap over by the tractor that I already got, but unfortunately it's not listed on my thing. Just follow the fence line and you can't miss it. In the bigger house directly next to it, we're going to find rusted scrap on this cabinet. Some gunpowder on the stack of debris. There will be some handgun ammo inside this dresser drawer. And a landmine over here on this table. Heading back into the church area, we are going to enter the church this time where we will find a crystal fragment on the painting directly above our crest. As we're leaving the church, we'll go ahead and insert our crest in a moment, but there is going to be a bird cage heading towards the six winged gate that leads to the stronghold. It will always have rusted scrap in it. <coughs> We'll go ahead and put our crest in really quickly, but we will not advance this direction yet. Over here on this tombstone, we will have a green herb in this pot. Nothing Making our way that. down the hill. Huh? If we come all the way to this uh, two-story building, then the back of this tractor will be a rusted scrap. Heading back to the Maiden statue, there will be a crystal fragment in the left eye of this goat. And on a bench directly behind it in front of the red chimney house, we will have a stack of gunpowder. In this house here, located right here on your map. Inside here, we can find a chem fluid on the bench. There's a 500 money down here that is really missable for a lot of people. You gotta crouch to find it. There is a lockpick drawer here with shotgun shells that we will come back for later. Chem fluid on the table. Freaks have rose. Once we advance towards the castle and interact with Heisenberg's trap, we're gonna have a box that has 300 money there for handgun ammo here. Those are fixed boxes, they never change. Exiting that place in the vineyard, we have a green herb in the middle of the garden. Now entering the castle. Once you come into the entrance, we are going to have a glass cabinet with a gunpowder to our right. And a random drop urn right here. It can be anything between money and ammo. It cannot be crafting items. Another urn down the table, down the stairs right here, which can also is also completely random. Once we do the witch cutscene and get ourselves all healed up, we're going to find a crimson glass on this desk. We're going to exit this room and go through the uh, fireplace, or the crawl space in the fireplace, leaving the bedchamber. Just before we advance to this door and get the maroon eye, we will have rusted scrap right here. That rusted scrap is missable. Once you leave this room, you cannot return. Coming out of the wall, we're going to ignore the stuff that is here, as we will be returning to this area later. From the main hall, we're going to head directly upstairs, where we will find a crystal fragment right here on the south side of the main hall on this painting there is a random urn right here that can have anything from ammo or money in it once we enter this room i have removed enemies from the game but normally bella would be uh, chasing you right now the first witch that you fight once you drop down here, making your way towards the tasting room, we will have a set of rusted scrap right here in this little cubby hole. After crawling into the tasting room, where Lady Demetresque is picking out a bottle of wine, we will find some handgun ammo on the ledge directly to our right, as well as a crystal fragment in the doorway just before the staircase. 
as we make our way downstairs we will find a breakable box on the left that will always have money only entering the dungeons as I call them we're gonna follow this path all the way around here and our first item is going to be in this cell right here which is a random drop box it can be anything next we're going to come into this next cell where we will find some rusted scrap laying on the ground I'll show you the location on the map it's easy for beginners to get lost down here coming into these two adjacent cells we will find some metal scrap in between the two cells one of the enemies down here will drop an item called Ingrid's Necklace, which will sell for 2,000 money. They usually spawn way back here where I haven't gone to yet, but as I'm moving really slowly to show you all the items, you may very well intercept me. Coming into this cell here, we're going to have a random drop box here. Again, random drop boxes can only have ammunition or money in it. Inside this, we're going to have a pipe bomb. That is always a pipe bomb. It is a fixed item. This guy will not die. As you can see, we acquired our Ingrid's necklace. Coming this direction, into the next area we're gonna have a breakable box here that is completely random coming into the cells here there is going to be a small crawl space against the wall that will have a rusted scrap in it to right down here that is it for down here except for this box right here which is also completely random we're gonna get some lucky shotgun ammo out of that which would be really great on a village of shadows run making our way upstairs just before fighting Bella we will encounter this room this area we will have a random uh, I'm sorry this is not a random box oh yes it is I'm sorry it is a random box it can be ammunition or money only then we're going to have the treasure room that you unlock with the iron insignia key. If you have not acquired the iron insignia key yet, that's okay. You will have to return to this area later. We just have to blast through this wall using some type of explosive. We will find some handgun ammo here. A pipe bomb over here, which is very convenient for opening that wall if need be. And a random drop box here. We're just going to shoot our landmine to break that wall, but you can use a pipe bomb or a explosive round with a grenade launcher you're gonna find a crystal fragment right here still enemy spawning down here I guess here we just need to get our two uh, fire pits lit up okay Bear with me, I haven't done this in some time. There's an easy way to do this, I'm sure, but I don't know how to do it. Well, this is the easy way to do it. Just get the zombie on fire. Let him do the work. I was thinking more of a faster way to do it, I suppose. Once you get this room this tomb opened up you will find the azure eye the azure eye combines with the silver ring that in this video we have not yet picked up leaving the secret treasure room we've already gotten this crate here we're gonna have one more crate right over here directly before the stair line right behind us right here this is a random drop box also money or ammunition only heading up the stairs towards the Bella fight right before the Bella fight 
We will find shotgun ammo on this bench, three shells, and a chem fluid on this barrel. As we enter the room where we actually fight Bella, we will find 10 handgun ammo on this cabinet and another 10 handgun ammo on this table. Coming into the kitchen area, we will have a random drop box here, which can be money or ammunition. Over here, we will find a rusted scrap. In the adjacent hallway, we're going to find us an item box that has the Lemmy's compensator with it. If you have already acquired that in a previous game, it will be a bag of money containing 10,000 lei. I'm going to rearrange my inventory slightly here to make room for my sniper rifle. Coming down the hallway here, we're going to have our first lock pick of the game. And I'm going to use it immediately on this chest right here to retrieve the wooden statue treasure wooden angel statue. Coming out of the kitchen into the dining room we're going to have a crystal fragment on the ceiling here and some gunpowder in this drawer in the corner of the room. Exiting the dining room we will have a urn directly to our right which is completely random ammunition or money only and there will be a cabinet over here that has five handgun ammo in it, always. Heading back upstairs, we're going to enter the wine room with the wine glass that we just picked up. Inside this room, we'll have a chem fluid on this barrel. After opening the door with the wine bottle and retrieving the courtyard key, Directly behind it is some gunpowder on this table. Now we will be making our way downstairs and going towards the courtyard through the dining room. Sometimes when I run through areas too quickly, I have to deal with a loading screen like this. Coming to the end of the courtyard, if you head left, you will find a random urn that can be handgun, ammo, shotgun, ammo, or money. Making our way back the way we came to the right, we'll find an urn in this corner that will always have metal scrap in it. A bird cage on the ceiling here that is completely random. There will be a green herb just off to the side of the, of the courtyard in the this plot here. Coming up the stairs, we're going to come around the corner and find a urn here that will always have rusted scrap in it. On every difficulty, all these fixed items will appear exactly the same on any difficulty you play on. Coming into the chambers area, we're going to find a chem fluid inside this drawer. We're going to make our way upstairs and once at the at the top of the stairs, we will find a random urn spot directly to our right. Making our way through the hallway, we will find a door here that contains a dresser that will have lipstick in it. This spot is not available. The first time you access this area, you will have to backtrack and retrieve it later. In this corner of the hallway, we will receive the castle map. In this dresser drawer here, we will find some handgun ammo. And in this glass cabinet, we will find a case of gunpowder. Making our way downstairs to the statue room. We're going to enter the pit, or whatever you want to call this room. We will find some rusted scrap right here. As we progress through the area, we will find a random breakable box here that can be ammunition or money. Coming around here to the corner, we're going to find some handgun ammo on a small table over here by the slidable bookshelf. This money here is just from enemies I killed earlier. Here is another random crate that can be ammunition or money. We'll find some rusted scrap in this narrow hallway with the hanging bodies. <coughs> 
On the back side here, we will find a semi-hidden gunpowder behind those two crates. A random breakable box there that can have ammunition or money. As we make our way up here, we're going to find another random box. Ammunition or money. Just depends on RNG. We're going to take the elevator straight up. Once exiting directly behind the elevator, we'll find a green herb in this pot. Before jumping over the balcony, we will have a little room to the side here with a money bag underneath the dress dresser that has 1000 lei. It never changes, the amount never changes. And then we hop over to the other side of the balcony, just outside of the chambers area. We will find a urn that is completely random. Inside here, after grabbing the Lady Dimitrescu, she will take you down to an area that you will not be able to return to. Immediately down here, you'll find some gunpowder just outside the cell you spawn in. And a random drop box here in the corner before the crawl space. Again, this is an area that you cannot return to later, so once you are here, if you want these items, grab them. After opening the gate, and before getting our hand severed, we're going to cut over here to this corner that I'll show you on the map right here. And we will find a box that always has 1,000 lay in it, nothing else, and a chem fluid in this corner. The chem fluid you can pick up with a broken hand, but the box you cannot break. Coming out of that room after grabbing the Mask of Sorrow, we are going to enter the Opera Hall using the key. We will find the Annex Castle map over here in the corner. Once we head upstairs, we will have a glass breakable cabinet here with another gunpowder right in the hallway between the library and the Opera Hall. We will find some handgun ammo in this dresser drawer. Coming into the actual, I'm not sure what you call this, I call it the Opera Hall hallway. We'll have a crystal fragment on the ceiling there. As we come all the way over here, mind the zombie that spawns in this room. We will find the flower swords ball for the labyrinth in the castle in that corner there. Making our way to the other side of the room, we will find a lock dresser here that has six sniper rifle bullets in it. After we head downstairs to the piano room and retrieve our iron insignia key from the piano, there is a urn just next to the stairs here. It is a random urn, it can be anything. There's where our iron insignia key spawns. There will be gunpowder on this green chair in the corner and rusted scrap in the fireplace. Exiting this room, back upstairs to the way we came. This time, instead of going left, we will be going right through the library where we fight the witch Daniela. Once entering here, if you go two bookshelves to the right, you will find three shotgun shells on the back of this bookshelf. There will be a dresser here with some handgun ammo inside of it. And a urn in this corner over here that is completely random. And there will be some handgun ammo on this bookshelf here. Ten rounds. Leaving the library and getting the Mask of Joy. We're going to not go that way, actually. We're going to come back to the main hall where we're going to turn right this time. And we will always find a gunpowder in this vase. It will never change. Inside this little vase here, which is, for some reason, the only small breakable vase, you will find money. Coming into the room you fight Cassandra in, you're going to grab the mask and head up here and do this fight. 
for the sake of continuity, I am going to actually show the gameplay of the fight because I don't want you to miss the pipe bomb that I have to pick up to blow up the wall. Two pipe bombs and a lock pick over there in the corner. I am currently playing on casual difficulty, so she won't be much of a fight. And she's dead. Now we'll get our mounted animal skull there, which you already know. Handgun ammo on this barrel and a box. Shotgun ammo on this barrel. Every time we kill one of the witches, whether it be Cassandra, Daniela, or Bella, they always drop a crystal torso. And as you leave, we'll find some rusted scrap on this shelf next to the window. Coming back into this room after placing our mounted skull, we will find a random urn directly to our left. I suppose I have to remove it from the plaque. Demon. This is a total random urn. It can be ammunition or money. There will be a crystal fragment in the ceiling of this room. And then the silver eye in this dresser drawer here that we're going to use to combine with the azure eye that we picked up earlier. The silver ring, I'm sorry. Coming into the bell tower room. Inside this glass cabinet here will be 15 handgun ammo. And then this little crawl space. After the painting, we will find a green herb directly to our left, kind of hidden on the floor in the corner. <clears throat> then we proceed up the ladder to the attic. This is the attic area. On this tiny shelf here inside that crate, we will find a gunpowder, the treasure map on this table, along with a random crate. It can be ammunition or money. A lockpick back here on this wooden box. And of course, inside this room, just before leaving the attic, we will find the F2 sniper rifle. And of course, I have way too much ammunition in my inventory, so I'm just going to move it out. So we can pick up our snipper riffle. Maybe I'll edit this part out. Maybe I won't. I probably won't. As you can see, I did not buy any inventory upgrades. <clears throat> Yet. Okay, leaving the attic and going to the rooftops. Before entering the tower that contains the elevator, we will find a small cubby hole to our left with an opening. There will be a random urn here that always has rusted scrap. So I don't know why I said random, because it is always rusted scrap. Pardon my mistake. Once we approach the elevator, there will be an urn directly next to it by the ladder. This is a random urn. It can have money or ammo. Same with this one here. We got money twice, which is unfortunate. Now we just follow the rooftops around. I know this castle segment is very long. Where is this guy? The castle is loot heaven, really. There is so much stuff here. As we come to this corner over here, we're going to find a gunpowder on this ledge. Right here on the map is where it's located. And if we turn around, we can find a crystal fragment hanging in between those little two divots there. It will always land on this ledge. Very missable by a lot of people. And then we will find a random urn here that can have money or ammunition in it. And we make our way up the stairs. Obviously, you can f find most of this stuff knowing that your uh, map will be highlighted blue once you've clear cleared an area. However, there are some areas that do not have that luxury. We have those two urns there. Afterwards, we're going to zip line and go down the ladder. 
or go down the elevator, I'm sorry, well, we'll find some money here. Another crystal fragment there. After placing our mass, we're going to come into this room here that we avoided earlier. And inside this glass cabinet, we will have a crystal fragment. In the drawer behind us here, we will have a chem fluid. Around the corner and down the hall, we will find some gunpowder in this drawer. And if we unlock this and enter it, we can now use one of the lock picks that we obtained. Just outside the bed chambers where the witches had us tied up, we will find four shotgun shells inside this lock pick drawer. Now we leave this area, we are going to enter the merchant's room. The only item of consequences here is the labyrinth that we used our flower ball for that we obtained earlier. Now we will exit towards the Lady Demetresque fight. As you can see, I will show you the parts of the map. This being a completely indoor area, you can find every item here easily by just making sure everything is blue on your map. Inside this hallway here we have these two breakable urns. One is a rusted scrap and one is a green herb. Those will never change. This urn outside is a chem fluid and that never changes. However, this one is completely random and we were unlucky enough to get money again. As we head up the stairs, we will do the Lady Demetresque fight. The fight is compromised of three basic stages. The first one is right here, where you just have to damage her minorly to get her to fly off. And then we will find a crate with handgun ammo here, some shotgun shells, some sniper rounds, and a first aid med. If you have to get rid of some type of ammunition in your inventory, I would always recommend getting rid of the handgun ammo as it sells for the least amount if you don't need it. And there's the handgun ammo that we will not be picking up. After fighting her on the tower, you're going to advance to the second floor of this tower where you'll find eight shotgun shells in here. And you'll find 25 handgun ammo in the urn next to it. Those urns never change. They will have the same contents every time. After defeating Lady Demetresque, we're going to ignore the house on our right as we have to return to this area later. We're just going to shoot through the door and come down here where we will find our first craftable animal, fish. There are three fish here. If I can learn how to shoot. Bear with me just slightly longer. I will buy an inventory upgrade directly after this. <laughs> We're going to pick up our three pieces of fish and then advance through the area. After leaving the castle completely, you arrive at the ceremony site. If you come to the path to the right just before the stairs, this is a fixed box that will always have three sniper rounds in it. It never changes. That box is not is located outside, so it can be missed. There are no map markers to tell you whether or not you've obtained items while you're outside. Once we make it to this little hall area, the Lone Road. <coughs> We will have some rusted scrap in this first cavern to our right. Directly across the way, we will find a box that contains metal scrap in it. This never changes. <coughs> Coming back into the village, we're going to skip through absolutely everything except for where we obtained the M1911 handgun. 
we got some rusted scrap here and a random drop box there. The M1911 handgun and the jack handle. We're going to grab both of those and then crawl under this tractor after using the jack handle here. We're going to head to the right. Don't worry, I know I skipped plenty of items, but we have to return to those areas anyway, so just bear with me. We'll go ahead and shoot this lock off here, but we have to come back to this area later, so there's no point of looting it now. Here's where we're located at on the map. We're going to be opening this gate with our iron insignia key. Inside here we're going to find a breakable box that is totally random and the wheel well on top of this barrel. Exiting the room we're going to head up the ladder. Before dropping down there will be some metal scrap all the way over here in the corner inside this tire. I'm going to make some room for my chicken here. On the stove right here we will find a case of gunpowder. This is in the yard to the side of the red chimney house. And we will have three chickens. Inside the outhouse directly behind the red chimney house we will find a large crystal right here in the window. Now if we enter the red chimney house, of course you can only enter it from the upstairs hole through the ladder until you unlock the door. There will be an enemy here directly by the winged key and some handgun ammo in this cabinet here. The items that I have skipped so far we will be returning to get later as it's more convenient to do at a later time. Leaving the red chimney house we are going to come right and shoot the lock off of this door right here that you can see I've already done and inside we will find a pipe bomb. Leaving this area we're going to go all the way to the Beneviento house where the only thing here is Angie after you kill her. Then we're going to head directly to the village right here in the graveyard to pick up the broken slab. We're going to do nothing else here at the moment. Now we're going to head back to Beneviento. This is us coming to Beneviento from the village. We're going to have these three bird cages hanging right off of this tree. All three of these cages are completely random. And we'll have a Vivianet, or however you say that, Viviante jewel on that tombstone. Then we're going to make our way further closer to the Beneviento house where we will have two areas, one on the right and one on the left. We're going to ignore the one on the right for now as it requires the labyrinth ball that we're going to obtain here on the left. As you can see, once you return here, this beast will spawn. He will not spawn when you first make it through this area. So you have to come back to this area anyway. This is why we did not loot this area the first time around. Inside here we're going to find the sun and moon ball for our labyrinth and a random drop of bird cage right here. Inside this little house we will have a barrel, or I'm sorry, a crate that will always have a landmine in it. And we will have a lock pick on this windowsill and of course the 870 shotgun on this table. There will be another breakable crate just across the way in that little cubby right there that we'll come back for in just a moment and another breakable crate behind the house right here. The t both of these crates are completely random. They can drop ammunition or money only. Heading all the way back to the Beneviento house now before getting onto the elevator we're going to come to this grave where we're going have a big guy spawn. If you kill the big guy you can sell his weapon for 30,000 points. But we are going to insert our broken slab into here to get Berengario's chalice. Making our way back towards the town area from Beneviento we are going to go the opposite direction to the left house now. Inside this wheel well or this well I'm sorry 
we're going to find Madalena's head. There will be a random crate right here. We got some lucky shotgun ammo out of it. Inside this outhouse back here, we're going to find the photo of a strange bird. Now entering the house, if you jump in through the window, you will immediately find an explosive round on the ground and lose Deer's key right next to the typewriter. Coming into the adjacent room, you're going to have the labyrinth that you use your sun and moon ball for to get the onyx skull. Now coming back to Potter's Field, which is directly between the uh, Beneviento house in the village. This time we are going to come this direction to get this breakable crate which is completely random and then there will be a large crystal on this tombstone right here. Now we will enter the village and go straight through the four wing door and we are going to kill this beast who will always drop this crystal beast jewel and then we're going to come into this house here that we unlock with the iron insignia key. And we will obtain our GM79 grenade launcher. As well as a lock pick in this window sill. And this crate will always have two explosive rounds in it that never changes. Coming into Moreau's area. After grabbing the flask, you can grab this crystal fragment off the ceiling here in this tunnel. Once you head up these stairs here, you will find 15, oh I'm sorry, 10 handgun ammo on this barrel here. After shooting this plank to make the floorboards come down, pardon me but I already did it so I could clear the area of enemies first, there will be a barrel underneath the stairs here which is completely random. They're following the tunnel over here to where you obtain the boat key. Here's our boat key. We're going to have a random crate right here. It can spawn anything. Looks like we got a lucky explosive round out of that. Very nice. And another random crate right here. Inside this boat there will be some handgun ammo. And there will be a green herb kind of in the middle of everything. Leaving that area, <coughs> we're going to be uh, taking the boat to this green tent. If you get too close to this green tent, you will activate a cutscene and you will not be able to return to this area. But if you make a direct right, you can come back here into this bay area through the cave. And in here we will find a large crystal right here. And inside this water we will find two fish. The first one will spawn right by this tree. These fish in the Moreau's area drop two pieces of fish rather than one. The other fish will spawn right here by these two weeds that are side to side. That's it for this area. As we move along towards the sluice gate, exiting the building that has the sluice gate, we're going to come behind the building to this outhouse which will contain a chem fluid. Then heading up the hill we are going to find some chickens in this path to our right. There are three chickens here. I'm just going to grenade launcher them because I was fortunate enough to have all three of them together. A crystal fragment in this chest. And there will be a rusted scrap back here on this barrel. Entering windmill number one. Before going further, there will be some handgun ammo on a crate here. And a random box barrel right here. Once we drop downstairs and start running around some, we will come to this waterland area where you have to shoot these bridges and make your way across the water. We will find some handgun ammo on the rooftop we're walking on here. As you progress you will eventually come across this area where you have to operate different floor gates and you will find some magnum ammo in this crate here.
This part has a checkpoint right before these doors and another checkpoint right after them. There are so many checkpoints in this area. As you can see there, that barrel I just shot is completely random. It can be money or ammunition. For the sake of all of these items being very close together, I'm not going to cut any time out. I will just show you them in real time. There will be another barrel right here, as you can see. It is also completely random. It can be ammunition or money. And then after we push this last rail cart down, you will see another barrel across the waterway in the next house on the top of the stairs there. And that is also a completely random barrel. As we arrive at windmill number two, we will find one random item barrel that contains ammunition or money. And of course the crank handle. After op opening up the sluice gate, we're going to follow Moreau to get ready to fight him. Directly before entering his house, you're going to have a barrel here that will always have 1,000 lay. That amount never changes. The contents never change. Entering this house here, right in front of Moreau's diary, you're going to have a case here that contains the high capacity mag for the M1911 handgun. And now in the area where you actually fight Moreau, I'm sorry, but I already had to kill him. We're going to spawn right here with this random barrel, a rested scrap here, and a chem fluid here. If we come around the corner here, we will have yet another random barrel with some shotgun shells and another rested scrap. Making our way all the way back here by this explosive barrel. We're going to find this barrel, which is not random. It will always have two landmines in it. There will be some handgun or uh, shotgun shells, gunpowder, and metal scrap on the table next to it. And coming back over here by the other explosive barrel, we're going to have a random barrel there, landmine, a first aid med, and of course handgun ammo on this barrel. After beating Moreau, making our way through the exits up ahead we will find a random drop barrel here ammunition or money and another barrel right here which is also random before leaving Moreau's area completely we are going to backtrack through the boathouse area where we will have a random box right here the box inside this broken windmill will always have two flashbang grenades in it. Coming into the water area behind the house where you get the goat of warding, there will be two fish in this area. The first one spawns pretty much directly in front of the boat. As I mentioned earlier, the fish inside this Moreau's area always spawn two pieces of fish meat instead of one. The second fish will always spawn over here by this pile of junk. And of course, we're going to have the silver angel statue inside this treasure box. Leaving Moreau's area, we're going to come over here and open this door with the crank, which will let us access this side of his area. We're going to have a random drop box here. We're going to have our labyrinth ball, the mermaid ball right here. Coming into this house, right before entering the house, we will find some magnum bullets just outside here. Excuse me, sir, I'm looting. Then we're going to find four sniper rounds here. And this box is fixed. It is not random. It will always have handgun ammo in it. In the middle house, we're going to find some handgun ammo only. 25 rounds on the windowsill. And if we backtrack just a little to head up this hill, we will find a green herb at the base of this zip line. Coming down the hill towards the last house, but kind of around it, 
We're going to head all the way down this path to this well where we will find a random spawn box there. And inside the well, we will always have some flash grenade rounds. Now, since we've been running around the bush all this time, let's just go right into the bush. Entering the third house in this area, we have to go around through the back. And doing so, we'll find some shotgun ammo here. A rusted scrap right here, which is really easy for people to run over and miss. And after entering the house through this little crawl space, we will have our Wolfbane Magnum inside this treasure chest here. Heading back to the Murrow entrance now. This is, you can get these things in a different order if you choose. This is just how I choose to do it. We are going to find two pigs that both drop two pieces of meat. And of course, back here, we will have the labyrinth. Inside this area here on top of this barrel, we will have a photo of a rare animal. Backtracking into the town, we're going to stop at the East Old Town. And I'm going to come in here and get what I should have got at the beginning of the game. This is the first fight that you have in the game. There's going to be handgun ammo on this bench, chem fluid on the floor, and some more handgun ammo back here by the back window. Exiting this room, we're going to head towards this building right here, the most bottom left on your map. However, we're going to go around the buildings here where we found this breakable crate earlier in the beginning of the game, which surprisingly still has its contents on the ground. We're going to use our crank on this gate and inside we will find us two chickens. I don't know where the other chicken is. Oh, there he is. Before heading up the ladder, this is a very missable item as it does not appear on your map. But directly under the house here, inside an empty propane tank, there is going to be a yellow quartz jewel. Now as we head up the ladder, we're going to ride the snow bank rift all the way over here to this shack roof. Open this treasure box to receive the Pigeon Ruby. Or the Pigeon Blood Ruby, I'm sorry. Dropping down and heading back to town, we're going to go back into this first house that we were missing a lockpick earlier. And inside here we will have some shotgun shells. If we exit this room, we're going to find two new beasts have spawned right here. Okay. Both of these drop two pieces of meat. And then we're going to have the random blue bird, of course, in this tree, who will be dropping the juicy game. Before we advance, we're going to backtrack just a little bit more to get everything we missed earlier. We're going to head to this two-story house first and use our wheel well on this wheel. And while that rides up, we'll go ahead and loot the bottom story of this house. We'll, we'll find a chem fluid on this. We will find a gunpowder here, a random crate here, and the teddy bear treasure down here. Inside this wood burner stove, we will find a Viviana... Vivianite? I don't know. We'll find a green jewel there. <laughs> and a rusted scrap on this cabinet there. Now that our wheel well is done, you can see we're retrieving the wooden animal head that we're going to combine with the wooden animal body that we don't have because we haven't picked up yet. Going into the gate and entering the second floor of this house, we're going to lockpick this dresser here, which will contain some shotgun shells 
While that opens up, we'll loot this cabinet that has handgun ammo in it. Again, anything in a drawer or a chest or in fixed item box, here's our wooden animal body. Its contents will never change. The amount of ammunition you get out of it will never change regardless of what difficulty you're playing on. Exiting the two-story house, we're going to find a porta potty directly to our left with some rusted scrap in it. We come downstairs through the breakable wall. We came to this area earlier to get the jack handle for that tractor, but this time we're going to come behind the house. We're going to interact with this wheel well right here, which will give us a lock pick. And while that comes up, we'll come into this little shack or barn, shoot down this bird cage which will always have four shotgun shells in it. After retrieving our lockpick, we are going to go around to the front of the house. I'm going to skip over that for you. Here's the front of the house. This is basically where we spawned at the beginning of the game. We are now going to have a random drop box here, which was not here before, by the way. Coming into the house, we will have a lockpick in this drawer here by the sink which will have sniper rifle rounds in it. Seven rounds. Coming into this room here, we will find a pig, who of course is gonna drop two pieces of meat. Now we're gonna retrace our steps, go all the way back over here to the iron insignia key that we opened up earlier right here. I'm sure you saw that my map had a red spot right here. It's for the sniper rounds on the ground that I chose not to pick up earlier for my inventory space. But we are done with this area, so we're going to go into this gate that we shot the lock off of earlier. This is Luthier's house. And here we're going to find an outhouse here that contains one lockpick. A random breakable crate in between the two houses. A gunpowder here on this table. Handgun ammo over here in the corner, as lo along with Madalena's body to go with her head right there. This probably goes without saying, but if the treasure has something in parentheses after it, it means it combines with something. Now let's go uh, into the actual Luthier's house. Using Luthier's key that we obtained by the save leaving Beneviento house. We're gonna find us a drawer here that always has chem fluid. A random drop box here. Looks like we're gonna be unfortunate and get money again. And a yellow quartz in this banjo guitar thing hanging on the ceiling. We will then open this chase with the code 270917. The code for this lock is right on a poster entering the room where we will receive the steel bird and the high capacity mag for the sniper rifle. Before leaving this area, there will be a random box underneath this kitchen cabinet. It will either be handgun ammo or money. Backtracking all the way back to the church now, we are going to be operating the well at the church. Inside this well, we're going to receive the necklace with two holes. And then coming back towards the fallow plot, towards Louisa's house, we're going to fight the alpha wolf who drops the crystal ancient beast, which sells for 80,000 points. If you got the ammo to kill him, he's worth killing. Over here in the corner where we picked up rusted scrap at the beginning of the game, we're going to find two chickens have spawned. If we make our way up the hill towards uh, Louisa's house, we're going to stop just short and come back into this house where we helped the daughter and her father at the beginning of the game to shoot this pig who drops quality meat and operate with this wheel, operate the wheel well on this well, which will always contain three pipe bombs. Going back through and now actually entering Louise's house again. We're going to find some magnum bullets just beyond the main gate here. We are going to find Louise's treasure box right here, which has Louise's necklace. 
Upon examining it, which by the way is under key items and not treasures, we will get the necklace stone out of the necklace, and then we can examine it again to get Louise's key. So we come over here, we'll get some handgun ammo and two explosive rounds.